Hey guys, what is up? Um, this is gonna be a really unique little video. I thought it'd be really cool to take you guys inside one of my exhibitions slash, um, I guess you could say appearances, so to speak. We are at TPC Avenel Farm, and um, on the agenda today is gonna be hitting some absolute piss missiles for a little exhibition slash clinic. And then we're gonna be going around to a couple of the par fives throughout the tournament and um, hitting drives. And But I'm not, I'm not someone who hits drives like for every group going through. What we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna hit drives on a couple different holes and the, and the groups are gonna play in from there. If I seem a little tired, it's because I am literally, and I mean literally straight off of a red eye from the Diamond in the Desert PLDA long drive event. That ended less than 16 hours ago. I have not slept since and we've, so four and a half hour red eye flight from Las Vegas. But we are here, we are gonna hit some nukes. We're gonna have some fun. If you guys want more videos where I take you guys inside my appearances and my exhibitions and clinics, I think it might be something you guys would like. Smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. I really don't know how this video is gonna flow, but um, I think we will be able to put it together nicely. So let's get started. We just moved this underneath the table. Uh, well, I need a computer up here when I'm... So, we need, words, so we're just... All I need to do that's all we need. Okay, for now, just... Um, just that, leave this, and then we'll move it. That's fine. Perfect. All right, guys, so we're out here on the range at TBC Potomac. I think in about probably 15, 20 minutes, we're gonna have a little hitting exhibition. Um, I'm very tired, but I think we'll be able to get through it. I'm gonna kind of work through the bag. There might be a couple of loose shots. In fact, I know there will be, but uh, I think it'll still be pretty cool. Um, shows you guys kind of what I do. It's just another side of the business, and I love doing it because I really enjoy entertaining people. We have a monitor set up in the track man as well, so you guys will be able to see my numbers with some of my clubs. And um, I think it'll be a pretty cool little little uh, video just to kind of be, be entertained. So we're just kind of warming up right now and we'll be getting into it shortly. So just trying to hit a couple of shots of the wedges and uh, we'll be quickly running out of room on this range. Hey guys, what is up? It's hard to believe, but we are halfway through the season's majors. Next up is Brookline, and from tee to green, get in on all the action with DraftKings Sportsbook. How can you get in on all the action, you ask? If you download the DraftKings Sportsbook app, enter promo code LONGDRIVE. All new customers who deposit $25 will receive $100 in free bets. That's a pretty sweet deal considering the fact that there will be over $10 million in prizes given out this week. So there will be a lot at stake. It will be a really exciting week. I got my money on Scotty Scheffler. I think he's got a really good chance to win. I've known him for a while. He's been a great competitor. It's going to be a really fun week. If you guys want to get in on all the action and you're a new customer, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app in our promo code LONGDRIVE. And if you put in $25 in deposit, you get $100 in free bets. Let's see you out there. This video brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. And also, just so you guys know, I might have said this earlier, but um, see, this is a beautiful course. I filmed my a golf vlog here, and uh, yeah, we'll just keep warming up, getting loose. And if I have 220 ball speed, I'm gonna be really happy with that, considering the state my body's in right now.
like you mean big funky curves or just like just a couple just to break them out. Let's do uh, and we can six a, iron and we can do a stinger long iron. So. Six iron, yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for coming out and supporting the 2022 fifth annual Roof Center Classic. Uh, which benefits the Roost Center for the Cure of GI Cancers uh, at Georgetown. Um, can't tell you how much we appreciate your support. Uh, and as part of the event this year, uh, we have a real pleasure uh, to be joined by Bernie Najar, who is <laughs> Director of Golf Instruction up at uh, Caves Valley uh, in Owens Mills, Maryland, and Kyle Berkshire, uh, current long drive world champion and four wins in a row. Yep. So he's on a hot, hot streak right now. Uh, so pleased to have him here. We're going to do uh, a little bit of a clinic, hit a number of different shots that uh, that these guys will walk us through. If you have uh, the ability to see the monitor here, that's hooked up to TrackMan. If you're a numbers a numbers person, which I absolutely love, so I'll be, be looking closely at them. Um, and we look forward to it. Uh, and these guys will be making their rounds around the course to say hello to everybody uh, during the day. And you'll also have a chance, we'll have volunteers on the course, but on number two and number 10, uh, we'll have a chance to hit from uh, where Kyle uh, lands a drive. So that's, uh, that's gonna be a new, a new contest this year, which uh, could be a lot, a lot of fun and hopefully produce a lot of eagles. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to Bernie. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome, and thanks so much for being here. Kyle and I have been working together for a long time, since you're about 12, Kyle. Yeah, since I was about this high. <laughs> yeah, I used to tower over him. Now, of course, things have changed. But in any event, it's always fun to see Kyle hit golf balls. I've had a front row seat for many years. He's extremely talented as a golfer. He was trained to play regular golf and developed some incredible club speed along the way. It wasn't all at once. But from right before high school, he was about 117 miles an hour to high 120s his freshman year in college. And then some of your teammates were saying to you, hey, you should try long drive. Yeah, and it, my swing speed started kind of creeping in the upper 130s when I was playing golf. And I wasn't playing bad, and it was just a very consistent game I had. And they just kept saying try long drive. I didn't want to because I felt like I was really close to a breakthrough on you know what I was trying to work on, but I decided to go out and give it a shot and qualified my first first try. And I said I'd give it a year and plan on being back on the team next year. And I ended up finishing third in the world championships. And then I kind of realized that the check I would have received if I was a pro would have been more than what I would have made it in entry level finance positions. So I figured I would go the other route. <laughs> The thing about Kyle that's unique is because he was trained for regular golf, he's got an incredibly consistent impact point. And so when you look at hitting the ball well at any level, how solid you hit the ball in the club face is really important. While you could work on speed, one of the things I would share with everyone, there's a point where you might be trying to go really fast and you're miss hitting your shots. You'd actually get more out of a little less speed and solid contact. So. As we go through this demonstration, listen to the sound of the ball coming off his club face. It's going to sound very different than most of the shots you'll hear, uh, but so much of the contact produces that distance. And one of the things I can share with everyone here, uh, probably the number two long driver in the world I had a chance to spend some time with a few months ago. Very similar speed to Kyle when they're going full out, but Kyle's impact point gives him a, an extreme advantage. Uh, because that player hits the ball a little bit towards the heel. So your equipment, whenever you look at your clubs, if you see a wear pattern, make sure they're fit properly. Make sure you're paying attention to that. If you're taking lessons, ask your coach to work on that. While you might want to hit it further, ball speed is really important. Kyle, what's the ball speed you see these days with your uh, tour? What's kind of the minimum to play at the World Long Drive I would say just to have a chance, you gotta be 205 plus. And that's like if you're maxing everything out with optimization, ball striking. Nowadays, you're not gonna make a check unless you get 220 ball speed. And some guys are just probably about two guys who are going to go Which even 10 years ago, I was unheard of. And uh, so it's kind of crazy the environment our sport is evolving into. It's just, and it just keeps going higher and higher. So it's pretty insane. One thing I'd share with everyone here is, Kyle, you're also not quite as tall as your competition, typically, no, right? No, 
I would say the average height in my sport is about 6'4", 6 6'5". 6 average weight is about 250, 260. I'm about 6'2", 202, 203. Um, and it, so it's not about weight, it's about speed, creating speed with a golf club. And my biggest advice, and I guess what I want people to understand is you don't have to be, you know, the incredible hawk to hit the ball far. You just need to create speed, you know, from here to here. That's really all you're trying to do. And it can be done in a number of ways that doesn't, that doesn't require bulking up to insane lengths, you know? You just gotta have a swing that fires fast. Yeah, that's great advice. I mean, Kyle's golf swing, as we mentioned, he was trained for regular golf. He's got a nice wide arc. You'll see when he hits his shots. Um, he does grip the club with a strong grip. He's had that as a junior. I never changed that with Kyle. Go ahead and set up facing the group for us. And yeah, so, I mean, this is, what you'll see, so my left hand is very far over the club, and my right hand kind of is very under it. So the thumbs are almost um, completely parallel with each other if you look at it. Okay. And that's just kind of how it's always been my entire career. And uh, my biggest strength as a junior was my ball striking, so we never changed it. So yeah, we could have changed a few things with my putting and chipping. You know, you never know what could have happened, but um, you know, it turned out pretty good. So Kyle's going to show you some shots. Before we get into that, Kyle, talk briefly, if you would, about a normal practice routine for you when you're getting ready for tournament play. So my first couple of years in the sport, I was hitting about, um, for Worlds, three to 500 balls a day. Um, and I've backed that down a little bit to about 200 balls a day now when I'm really prepping for a tournament. So like the tournament I had in um, Las Vegas yesterday, um, I, was, I spent about two weeks prepping for that and I was hitting 200 balls a day um, and every fourth day I would take the day off to recover and I that will balance between 50% will be speed like technique and ball flight work and the other 50% will just be speed training we want to marry the two because you need speed but you also need the ability to hit the ball far and so those sometimes conflict if you don't train both and, uh, so that's I'm very very um, particular I'm making sure that I train both speed and ball strike you can control that ball and last but not least it's important that you take care of your body Kyle does a great job in the gym and also with his nutrition anytime you're trying to be the best in the world you got to look at these little nuances at every level of what you eat and how you're training and I think everybody here whatever you're doing in the gym or eating before you play it's a big part of your success on and off the course keep that in mind because what you're about to watch in my opinion, it's probably the best drive of the golf ball I'll ever see in my lifetime for distance and accuracy. And in World Long Drive, the grid's only 60 yards wide. Just to give you some ideas on that, on the PGA Tour, the average miss left and right with the driver is 60 yards. Once you hit it out over 300 yards, you're gonna get those shots. So for him to land the ball on the grid about half the time lately, which is pretty crazy, Another advantage he has, you gotta be really precise, both physically and mentally. So we're gonna show you some shots now. Uh, we'll be out here on the tee, make yourself comfortable. There's data on the screen. There's also an iPad floating around it if you wanna see some numbers. I think you'd find it interesting to look at not only his club speed and ball speed, but watch the trajectory of the shots. Watch how high the ball goes. And one more thing just to build on what he said, so you guys actually have a visual. So that bay out there is probably about 400, 420. So if you look at the right edge of that bay and where those pines start, that's about 55 yards wide. So that's pretty much what we're looking at down the grid. When we're actually in there, hitting our target area, that's about how wide it looks. And it doesn't get it does not look any wider in competition. So um, it's a very precise sport, and it definitely requires a lot of timing and precision. So we'll get out and hit some shots. I want you to see Kyle hit some iron shots. We'll work through that and get you out on the court. Well, let's do it, Kyle. All right, so this is my pitching wedge. Um, this is what we're going to start with. Uh, I was hitting a few of these earlier. They were going about 170. So we'll see if we can replicate that.
little bit of a headwind now, so it might be going a hair shorter. And I'm also trying to hit it somewhat straight, so. If I was a step on one, might lose a little bit of accuracy, but um, pay attention to that club speed, it'll jump up a little bit. I'll close the face a little bit so we get a little more speed. Don't recommend playing that shot in the course, but it sure is fun to hit. <laughs> Here comes the eight iron, folks, and uh, normally from 200 yards, I don't know about all of you, but I sometimes need to reach for a hybrid or some other club. But I think eight iron is, is pretty suitable for Kyle. <laughs> if you're working on stuff, I've, and I, I, a lot of the pros I've spent time with down in um, Florida doing Meyer League tour events and stuff, they all tend to do this as well. Hitting an eight iron is a really great way to work on your swing because it's kind of the perfect medium between your long irons and your short irons. So you can kind of get a little bit of info on all your clubs by swinging the eight iron. If you swing a club that's like a four iron, it's gonna be much flatter, have a lot more of a shallow swing plane. It's tougher to have that translate to like a wedge. So if you swing an eight iron, you're gonna have a lot more tran you know, transfer throughout the bag. And it's always nice to get a nice little wear mark in. So if you just hit one club over and over, it'll look nice. So I can't really see how far those are going. They might be going a tick short of 200. The wind has gotten. How far is it going? 200 on the Okay. Always nice playing with Kyle because I just pop up four clubs. You hit eight, I hit four. Pretty easy. Hey Kyle, how about showing them a little shot shaping with the six iron? All right. What do you want me to hit? Let's shake. go. With, well, no, no <laughs> shake. I got that shot. I'd say you got to recover. Hit, hit a high cut for them. How high? Let's go 150 feet. Somehow that's actually going to be somewhere close to that flyer. I'm going to guess you want me to do the other one now? It's a little bit low. Can you hit it a little bit higher? Okay. There we go. You gotta make sure you can get it over the trees. <laughs> and by the way, when you play number two today, there's a shot I want you to think about. When we shot a YouTube video out here for Kyle's channel, which by the way, you should definitely check out if you haven't already. Out the left side of the fairway, probably where you're gonna be today off the tee, hopefully. Kyle was just in the rough. And how far were you? 288 or something like that. Yeah, so this is in December, mind you, and we were out here filming this, and... And if you want to see the shots, actually on my YouTube channel. Um, yeah. I think it's on the front nine, TPC Potomac, look it up, so... So there's some pretty tall trees on the left side there, if you play the hole. And I look at Kyle, and I said, are you thinking what I'm thinking? He says, yeah, I can hit it over those trees. So, what club do you use, Kyle? Three iron, I want to say? <laughs> yeah, just a routine three iron. Long story short, that ball flew up over the trees perfectly. How far were you from the hole? 15 feet and I did not three putt. It's pretty <laughs> incredible. <laughs> but I did one putt. Uh, all right, I'll get some draws. Put a few draws for them. This is in case you're needing to curve the ball from the other side. I'll be able to move a little more inside right, to right. get some room. All right. yeah. <laughs> Don't run the I shank can, play. I can move. the wind on that one. I just got moved back. <laughs> you say you don't trust me? I'm going to hide behind the camera. I hit more than one of those in my, my first couple of tournaments playing in the Meyer League Tour. I'm ashamed to admit, but we're working on it. All right, we'll hit one more hook. We can get this really working. That's also the fastest way to increase your ball speed is hit a snap hook. Just yes. not good for scoring. All right, speaking of low flight, would you hit a couple stingers? Yeah, I'm just getting this. Uh... So now he's going to use a driving iron, which, by the way, is always cool to watch. It's depressing to play with a guy who hits his driving iron like this, but it's a fun club to watch him hit. There's a little stinger. And 
you know, you never know on a dog leg where you want to hit one out there at 3.30 and just cut the corner. So Kyle, tell them about the Stinger. How do you play the Stinger? Well, I play it a little differently than a lot of people. Um, and to be honest, it's, a, it's still a shot that's difficult for me just because of my speed. When you're really squeezing the ball, it's very tough to hit it super straight. To be honest, this is actually technically not my stinger club. This is more of my driving iron. The stinger club is probably the three iron because that extra loft gives, is a little more forgiving on the spin loft. But for me, I like to actually have a forward press so that I can just, I don't, a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll put it back in their stance and create a forward press that way. But that's where you're really going to start digging and just not good for the wrist and it gets very difficult when you get that steep to catch the ball the way you want. So you can create that forward press just by pressing your, your wrist forward with the ball middle of your stance and you kind of sweep, sweep the ball more with those uh, hands ahead de-lofting the club. A stinger is basically just finding a way to de-loft the club to like two or three degrees of loft. You know, and that's, um, there's more than one way to do it and I just prefer the forward press because I don't want my wrist to get out at me at, my, at uh, 26. So. Because everybody thinks my back's gonna be gone in two years anyway. So. <laughs> but I'm all here. I'll, I'll, let me let me let me hit a few driving irons as well with this club. Driver in tournament competition um, when I was playing tournaments, but uh, we're, we're slowly getting to that point. But um, this is probably my favorite club that Cobra's made for me. Besides the driver, obviously it's a King Forge Tech, and there's actually an insert here. It's a foam insert. Um, the problem was. It would keep blowing up on me. So they actually have this little metal infused in the foam. It gives it just a little bit more of a firmness. I can get about 100 to 150 hits out of it, which is a big deal for me. Because um, I can actually then use it. For the so it's definitely been a really good club for me throughout the, the couple of last year or so. So that's kind of been more or less my go to club off the team. I'll get one more here. I think now we're moving into the club you guys really want me to want to see me hit. Yeah, just before you, just before you hit the driver, just a couple quick tips for you with the driver. With today's technology, you'll hear oftentimes people talking about getting a positive attack angle. Has anybody heard about that before? Uh, Kyle, what's your attack angle? Pretty high. Well, I've got it up to about plus 13, plus 14. And, and the thing is, the, the skill of the sport, people often, I think, assume the sport's a sideshow, and they say it's, you know, really one-dimensional. All you're trying to do is hit it as far as possible. But I would say you can look at any sport like that. You could say in golf, you're trying to shoot the lowest score possible. So there's a lot, all that to say that there's a lot more to long drive than speed and swinging out of your shoes. And you need to be able to change attack angles because attack angle dictates spin loft, spin rate, landing angle, things that make the ball go far. And so, I have the ability to hit up on it up to 14, 15 degrees if it's a tailwind and I want to spin it a lot so the ball stays in the air. And I can even get very close to zero, um, which allows me to squeeze the ball and hit it through some really tough wind conditions. So versatility is very important in that respect. Uh, and what's your uh, shaft weight and, and flex? So when you're going um, under that, at that swing speed? I, I'm actually not super, I'm not familiar with the shaft weight. It's pretty typical from what I know. The flex is 238 cycles per minute, which is roughly a regular flex. To be honest, I'm probably swinging a flex that's a lot lighter than most people here. And um, it's a little bit different of a style, but see, in long drive, we care about how many balls go in the grid, but we don't care about how bad our misses are. So with a regular flex shaft, what I'm doing is I'm letting that shaft kick and I'm timing it up. Now, I learned with a stiff shaft versus a flexible shaft, I, had, I didn't hit any more balls in play, just with a regular shaft, my miss was much worse. And, but in long drive, we don't care about how bad our miss is. We just want to score the ball in play, and I have a little more speed for this, and it's easier to kind of control that thing like this. That's why I decided to go with this. And, and one thing for everyone, the old adage in golf, stay behind the ball. 
long drivers, the best drivers of the ball, when they hit the ball at impact, their right side is lower as a right-handed player than their left side. The left leg, when you start to watch Kyle hit the driver, he's got so much of this going on. What happens, Kyle, through the ball? Oh, I mean, it'll, the, 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 um, the foot literally will come completely off the ground. And this foot's back foot will have like 1% of my weight on it. So I pretty much go airborne. But you'll see a lot of guys do that in long drive because of that insane push off the ground. And any tour player who swings, who swings over 120, you're going to see a little bit of that. JT, Bryson, you know, all these guys, they have, and you have to do that or else you're not going to have a left knee for very long. So, my competition driver, four degrees. This is one of the heads I won with uh, yesterday um, out in Las Vegas. I might be a little slower today because I'm achy and I took a red eye to get here, but we'll see what kind of speeds we can produce and if we can hit it far. How'd you like the free haircut on that one? Man, I felt it. That was awesome, man. The wind coming by. <laughs> I'm telling you. Here we go. Do you want me to hit that thing? I don't want you to just fly. What? Yeah, just fly your normal time. You're good. <laughs> oh. That's pretty close. I want you to get target oriented, you know? <laughs> Just over the camera. How close was that? Where was that? Is that over the camera? I think it was over, but it, it's going to look real Want me to hit a stinger? No stinger. <laughs> <laughs> so that's 146 club speed in case you haven't seen the monitor. He's, ah, he's got another 10 miles an hour in the tank, but after a red eye, I don't think you're going to see it. Yeah, uh, yeah, I forgot to mention, I've been awake for about 38 hours. <laughs> um, you know, and I, the, the tournament was in 140 degree heat too, but um, just so you guys know, so yesterday my fastest club speed was 158.2 miles an hour. My highest ball speed was 228 and a half. So um, I just hit about probably 400 balls yesterday. So you want that bow still out there? Yeah, it's good. Something to note is how not all of them are going straight, but probably 40 to 50 percent of them. And that is probably the single reason why I'm the top long driver. It's not speed, you know, it's really not any X factor, it's just the ability to hit the ball straight with a lot of speed. And you'll notice my misses are huge misses, but 50, 30 to 50 percent of the time it's going straight, and that's all that matters in this sport. And to be honest, that's why I love it because. You can have five horrible golf balls, 250 yards OB, just had one good one, it's a great set. I got a little tired of playing golf having 17 great holes and then having one bad hole and ruining my round. So. That's, in my opinion, a big selling point for long drive. <laughs>
As we as we wrap up, do, do you all have any questions for Kyle or anything I can answer for you about the golf swing or how to practice speed? What's the loft on your driver? Four degrees. If it, it goes between the competition. One degree up to seven and a half. So Worlds last year, first first round, straight downwind, I was hitting six and a half degrees. The next morning I was in the ADM group, 15 to 20 miles an hour in, I was hitting a one and a half degree driver. And the thing with the Worlds is a tough tournament to win because it's seven days. And any given day you can get knocked out. And all it takes is a miscalculation on what ball is going to go the best that day and you're done. It's a scientific sport for a lot of reasons. How do you figure out that rock forward? Um, I have not broken a, I have not cracked a single Cobra LTD head. Yeah. There are some heads I have that have over a thousand hits, however, what will happen is the head will flatten. So we all have on our driver heads a bulge and roll. This is what basically gives us gear effects. So if we hit it on the heel, it'll cut back. If we hit it on the toe, it'll tend to work back left. So when the driver flattens, you don't get that. And so obviously if you hit something really hard, it's gonna start flattening. And that, they, that happens after a couple, about 150 balls. But this is the best metal that I've ever hit uh, in terms of a composite metal. I have never split one of these heads, ever. So it's pretty unbelievable what they've been able to do. How wide is your grid? Thank you. What's that? How wide is the grid? Not wide enough. <laughs> um, I would say, so the, the narrowest grid I've ever hit on, and this was an, this term was a nightmare. It was back in 2019 on um, Atlantic City. We were hitting the, like a 20 mile an hour gale force wind all tournament. It was 38 yards wide. And I mean, it it was like trying to thread a needle. And um, into a headwind, it was even worse. I'll put it to you this way. The tournament was won with a 288 yard drive. Wow. wow. So, and, ju and um, there, there was a guy who, with 218 ball speed, the ball went 262. <laughs> so, yeah. But it varies tournament to tournament. Oh yeah, so um, it's shifted more towards 60 yard wide grids, which is, I think, good for the sport. It is long drive after all. You don't right. want to get too honed in on the accuracy after a certain point. So, nowadays it's 50 to 60. Worlds is at 60 yards wide, which I think is where it should be, because it needs to identify the longest hitter who can be accurate within reason. And that's a good number. If you can't hit inside 60 yard wide grid, you don't deserve to be a world long drive champion, in my opinion. But if you're, if it's a 40 yard wide grid, it kind of starts inching a little more towards being accurate because the shorter you hit the ball, the easier it is to keep it inside a certain point. You know, so there has to be a balance. Here. 60 yards is a pretty good balance. Yeah. All right. Okay, well, uh, big round of applause, please.